Unfortunately, this is going to be our last season in Smite, uh, which bears a lot of emotional weight for me as we've had quite the journey here together as a team. Uh, the team itself has not had many roster changes, so at a core, we've been together for a very long time. When I first picked up this team, Obey was nowhere near what it is now. Um, and a lot of what we have been able to achieve has been due to the legacy that we've built together um, that really kind of pushed Obey out there. I think that it's been a hell of a journey and it will never be one that I regret, um, especially the three years with Obey. It's, uh, We've, we've accomplished so much that even, you know, not winning will never take that away. So that's really important. But at the same time, I feel like having the World Championship win with everything that's going to happen next year uh, with Prime's family and with Obey leaving, it would be the perfect, it's the perfect ending, right? You know, it's the story, the storybook ending that could really, it, it just wraps it up so perfectly. So while not getting the win wouldn't ruin it and it would still be the best bits of my life, uh, I think we could a win would be just the cherry on top of an already great cake. I've been around esports for, for a little while and you see these you see these orgs, you see these teams come and go, uh, orgs trying to notice the, the top team and then abandon them when they start losing. Obey wasn't about that. Obey isn't about that. Obey is about finding the people that matter and sticking with them. Big trade for Mealty to Raffer. A lot of orgs run away, with, a, a lot of orgs run away right there. Obey stuck with the squad, stuck to their guns and they made it happen. You look on Twitter, you look on, on YouTube, Obey is about the team. And that's the most you can ask for. The, the Smite community, the Smite scene, we're not the biggest. And when an organization as storied and as big as Obey gives a shit, that matters. That really matters. And uh, we really like to Obey here in the Smite scene. And the legacy is real. The people absolutely made it happen. And uh, we love Obey. Having so much, uh, well, just having so much in common with people because uh, we all we all share the same drive and stuff like that. Like we don't, things that we don't have need to have that much in common except for Smite. But just having Smite in common is more than having you know everything in common because we all share the the passion to win and I don't know the the urge to be better. Is that it? <laughs> no. Oh, she's fucking on me, man. I don't know if I usually have a cross, though. You can tell that again. You can't miss his autos. Why is, why is the Phoenix like this as well? Like, That's not as bad as that. They're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, like his goes across the map. Well, the flower. Yeah. Gotta make sure that <laughs> like, the flower. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. 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 It's very so comfortable. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's still good. The child's a duck. How do you do that shit? <laughs> yeah, so Obey Alliance definitely uh, didn't have the start to Season 5 that I'm sure they were hoping, but I think that Obey has been a team that's been around long enough, especially with the addition of Raffer, who's just such a veteran, that they understand that bad spring split games are, are just that, they're just bad spring split games. And the end goal was always DreamHack and, and Worlds and, and winning a title. So I think that Obey, for me, is a team that, yes, they had their struggles, and, and I really don't think it bothered them very much. I, I always think about, you know, how, how Nate and Twig and Prime, those, those three are the core of Obey in my mind, and, and how they are very hesitant to make any changes for any reason whatsoever, and that I knew that they were just gonna try and stick it out with the five that they had, and, and, and I was hoping that they would be able to put it together, and, and ultimately they have. Um, so at the start of the season it was definitely a huge change to pick up uh, Rafa from Energy um, as uh, our pass support uh, Emilzi left our team. It was, uh, it was very different because uh, Rafa definitely likes to get stuck in more, he likes to be a bit more aggressive, he likes to be the guy that takes all the damage. So, uh, and I kind of used to do that for my team is be the guy in first that would take damage and kind of maybe die so that everyone else could maybe have a good fight. So it was definitely a big, uh, a big change. I think over the course of the whole year, we have just generally got better. Uh, and in, in full, I would have, I felt like we were the strongest team like in, in, the, in the world, I'd say by far, or at least in Europe, uh, by far towards the end. We, we, we could think for the last 
two, three weeks, we pretty much won every game, maybe dropped one in a best of three uh, a couple times. And uh, yeah, we're, we're looking strong at, towards the end. Uh, but now I think hitting form at this time of year is perfect. Everybody really cares about Worlds. It's the important part of the year, realistically, um, in terms of personal pride, in terms of prize money, in terms of everything. Us coming together now is, is perfect. I don't really care about our performance early in the year. Obviously, it would have been nice to do better. Um, but winning now is all that matters. Uh, when we heard the news that Prime was expecting a baby and the due date around it, in fact, it was quite funny because when he told us, he told us in the most Prime way possible. He didn't sit us down for a big meeting and say, look, guys, I've got some big news. It was just after a scrim session. And he kind of just blurted it out and said, uh, Arena's pregnant. And that was it. And that was the Prime thing. We had the conversation about it, which was uh, exactly what you'd expect out of him. Okay, I knew kind of early, I knew way earlier in this year, like around summer, that well, there was a big chance that I wouldn't be able to make Worlds because my big girlfriend was pregnant. The due date was basically when we had to fly out to Worlds, which was, it was kind of stressful. I think it stressed out my girlfriend more than it stressed out me because she, she knew I would be kind of bummed out about it. But at the end of the day, there's nothing you can do about it. Like, you just got to be supportive, you know, help your girlfriend get her through that and then, you know, I'll do my thing after when everything is okay. Uh, but going forward, I was so relieved to hear that he was coming. Uh, we were lucky to uh, have some success in finding Flippo as a substitute, but obviously you can't just bring someone in and replace um, years of synergy that we've built up together. Um, in my opinion, and many other opinions, Prime is the best middler in the world, so going in without him was always going to be a challenge. But thankfully he can make it. Uh, we're going to get some good games in with him. And although we've missed some practice, having to practice with the sub, um, I think that the games we have at LAN will, will catch us up pretty quickly and we'll be on form for when it matters. Dino now in some serious trouble. Twig and Zalia all over him. Prime hits a dozen by himself. Papa doing it all. Clout might have made the game-changing play. Two double kills for Pretty Prime. It was rough, man. Was using every single blue. I feel like they could have pulled no, one. Rapper knocked up, doesn't care. Weekend's already dead. He gets solo to the mid lane. It's a three for one, but the game is done. Pretty Prime gets one just for fun. The man that almost didn't make it to land is going to win the game for him and his team. Pretty Prime here, seven, three, and nine. Obey Alliance, they feed the Swede, they best LG. <laughs> they just, well, and they just run, they don't fight oh, you. Know, today we learned yeah. that Prime can play this and Twig can play Ola. I feel like we've given too much away. They're clear getting our strike. Yeah, wow. <laughs> The whole show, kinda, like she's like this step mom, kinda, cause the real mom dies, and the whole thing is him asking his kids permission to so marry Aunt Robin. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that is fucking bullshit. The whole show is him asking his kids permission to marry Robin. Could you whisper inspiring enemy quotes today while we're playing so it doesn't lose hope? Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> inspiring enemy quotes. Yatta! Can, uh, can you jump up and touch the roof then? Let's cut, um, let's the roof. Oh. There we go. Guess I got this manually changing. <laughs> yeah, I think we're just gonna whip out the chop chop. If it doesn't work, we'll whip out the chop chop again. If it doesn't work, we'll continue to whip out the chop chop for all our remaining games until we don't make worlds. That's our general plan. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, we're keeping it pretty loose. We don't want it to happen. I think Obey are going for the end, And fish. they absolutely should. It's Brostiak, he has 10 seconds to try and keep this alive. They're trying to kill the Kabrakin quickly, and they do burst him. Now they can turn their attention towards the Titan Kings. Not gonna be able to make it back in time to defend. Tyria will come up, but he's just the Kefri. Game one, going to Obey. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Let's go. Oh. Uh, it's an all-in commit onto Big Man. They take down Big Man Tings. Dardes and Nika, the only one left. Not even Nika. Double Deicide coming through. And this time, Obey Alliance should be able to take the game. They're going to DreamHack. Prime shows up. Oh, 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 oh,
Come on, boys, let's go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we get to just pack up? No, no, no. I, I look naturally pretty. <laughs> as long as my receding hairline isn't too obvious, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, what are you laughing at? The matches didn't go necessarily as well as we wanted them to, but we did win pretty convincingly. The first one was our first match of the LAN, so it's a bit of a warm up. Then we played Mouse today, and Mouse was a lot harder of a matchup. We expected them to be a lot tougher, but I think we went through it pretty convincingly. I'm pretty. Um, I don't want to use the word convinced again, but let's say convinced that we're going to do well at Worlds. Oh, hold on, sorry. <laughs> what are you wearing? <laughs> New Jersey. <laughs> So I think this weekend we played excellent. It was really well mattered like between us. We knew we knew that everyone was so disciplined. Everyone trusted each other's calls. The comms were clear. Uh, I think the main thing we did was stuff was communi communicated before it actually happened. So one instance today that right just comes off the top of my head is I said to Prime, "If he blinks, I'll turn." You know, something as simple as that will give Prime the confidence to play further up. And he, um, he knows that he can do more with his abilities just because he trusts my abilities. Some, sometimes, in like, I'd say like earlier on in the year, we definitely struggled because we never had these strengths between us. But now, coming to Worlds, I feel like we're really bonding together and coming to that point where we can definitely win the Worlds Finals. Like, I'm very, very happy to be here. Like, I, I wouldn't want to miss this at all. Uh, I, I felt really bad about not going here to begin with. So and I wasn't entirely sure I was going to be with the baby and all that stuff, but in the end, it's really, really good to be here. And uh, you know, uh, depends how many, you know, how many more years I have in me. Like this might be my last chance to win. So. I've only been in Obey for about a year, slightly over now. But for Nate, Prime, and Twig especially, I think knowing this is the last season with Obey, the last split, to Finally get that world win in is a very, very big deal for them, even more so than me. Although I would also very much like to win. Um, I think they would really like to fulfill that legacy of finally getting that W at the end. Uh, me. Uh, that's, oof. Uh, oof, that's a rough one. Uh, yeah. I think no matter how this ends, it's a very big chance this is my last year. Uh, which is pretty big for me because I, I don't know what I'm going to do after. And uh, I love playing with the boys. I played with Nate ever since I started. I played with Twig since four years maybe. And uh, uh, the rest of the guys are kind of newer, but it's like the only, you know, it's the only team I really had in Smite. Like, I haven't had another team that was good at all. Uh, I don't know. I just love the boys. Like, I will miss them. But I think we started, like, I think it's anybody's race, really, I think. All the four teams that already qualified, and uh, at least us and Rival should be able, to, like any team could win, honestly. It's just it's gotta be better today. So, this will be my fourth World uh, Championship that I do attend. Um, two were under energy, which I, which I was victorious. Got the World Championship ring. Uh, one which we lost, which was the last Worlds we played as energy. Um, but to answer the question mainly, I feel like this is, I feel like it's more, I want my team to win it and I'll try the best of my ability because I feel like they deserve to win it in the last Worlds. Um, so I'll definitely do the best of my ability and I think they're killing it as well. But it would mean a lot because I'd be the only person to actually have three World Championship rings, so bring it on. So uh, yeah, this week after coming out of the qualification line in first place, we've just been continuing to prep for the, you know, the teams that have qualified into Worlds and the teams that are on our side of the bracket in particular. Um, so we're mostly prepping for our first game, which is Splice. We've been watching back some old VODs of them playing and uh, discussing how we'd like to combat the way they draft and stuff like that. Um, and also looking back over our own footage from the tournament we just played and looking for anything we can improve upon there. 
we've done some uh, some research on our first round opponent, who is Splice, um, which should be a really a, a good set. I feel like they are probably the closest to us in terms of playstyle that NA has to offer, um, and they tend to be really good at the uh, at figuring out what's going to be meta before it is. So hopefully they've not got anything too big of a surprise up for us, but um, we feel confident with the prep that we've done this week that we can uh, take them on. We could, we, we don't seem too far behind to be honest, but and, and the, the picks were kind of bad I'd say, but like, uh, we could just change it up, I don't see why we wouldn't. If they go for a Kepri comp like they are, they're picking Kepri that early, like why not just pick Zhong mid, uh, Terra support, blink on the, on the Nuwa and Jing and just yeah. follow them around, Jing's good against it. I'll give you, but like, Sasano can't really do shit. Now most of it here, Obey are looking like a potential favourite. You can never class them as a favourite, because unfortunately, Obey have a mentality of being bridesmaids and never the bride. But maybe this year is the year. Two finals over the course of a few years isn't a bad thing. The bad news is they've just never managed to find that win for themselves. Now though, this year, there's definitely potential. They have the ability. It's all about the execution. Their performances so far have just been so dominating that it kind of makes you wonder if there's going to be anybody who's even able to slow them down at this rate. But I am actually super excited to see how they're going to match up against the other European teams specifically at Worlds. I think they definitely had a bit of a rough time during the online phases, but everybody knows that the shift from online to LAN is always going to have a pretty significant impact on the gameplay itself. I think that Ataraxia, Captain Twig, and Pretty Prime are three members who are going to be able to bring you that level of aggression that you are looking for from world champions. This is a massive year for us, a massive tournament for us, the biggest tournament in my mind that we've ever had to play in. I mean, my first Worlds, we came into not exactly the favorites and we made it to the final that was under Obey and then the next year we, we fell out in the semi-final under Obey. And this year I'd really, really like to get the win. This will quite possibly be my last ever year competing in Smite and it would, it would hurt me a lot to go out without having gotten that win, the final. You know, it's, it's just, it's what I compete for. It's what I'm here for, is to win a world championship. I want to be the best in the world at something. It's, it's not an opportunity you get very often in your life, you know, um, to the point where I left my real job to try and pursue this this year, to try and get that championship with the guys um, and not, <laughs> I don't know, not getting it would hurt me a lot. Not getting it would hurt everybody a lot. Um, we're all here to win. And this is the biggest tournament of the year. The biggest tournament of every year is Worlds. It's all everybody wants to win. Um, so I would say it means a lot to all of us, really. Uh, Prime and I have been doing this together since day one. We are, uh, it's nearly six years now. We started off in the Challenger Cup together, um, formed a team and, and made the run from amateurs to pros. We, in that year, we went from challenger to second at Worlds on the Worlds final stage. Missed it by one game, unfortunately. And since then, we've had a pretty successful career together. Um, once we joined up with Obey Alliance in season three, we had a, uh, another run at Worlds where we came second again, um, which makes us the most successful team at coming second. No other pro players have come second as much as we have at Worlds. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. But that just really builds up how important this year is for us. Um, you know, it's, we've been chasing this, this first place win at Worlds since day one. And we've been so close so many times that it hurts not to get it. So, you know, this, this is the most important of them all really because before it was just about the winning. And if you don't, then there is always next year, as, as hard as it is to say at the time. But this time it is... Um, it could be the last one because Prime, congratulations to him and Arena, just had a baby. And with the changes coming in next next year for season six, it's a good chance that this could be his last world. So for me, it's, it's really, really important that we win, not just for me, but for him, because I know how much this means to him. It means more to him than anyone. Um, and it's so important that he gets this win. So I'm going to do everything I can to make sure he gets it. That could be a different story, but there's a Paolo again that's going to get the beat out of Cyclone Spin. And in goes Zayla, but the Phoenix, the Phoenix is down. That's what Splice needed. They have broken the base. But in goes Divio, Sino, Moswell, Cyclone Spin, and a roar. The whole five-man squad of Splice are going to try and take game one from it. Obey. 1-0 to the North Americans in the upper bracket quarterfinal. <laughs> Cataclysm. 
Azalea coming in round the back, looking at Aurora. Aurora picked up with a great deal straight away from Devios. Apple still hits though, and causing a bit of damage. Fire Giants getting low, and Obey are watching the Fire Giants still being tagged. Sashing again from Sino onto Twig, but Twig returns oh. the damage back. Twig still alive, but Marswell got Rafter again, and now they're on the Phoenix line. Ataraxia's got to use the Purification Beat. Cyclone jumping in and finds the auto attack on Ataraxia. Left side, Phoenix getting low. And it's going to end up falling down as Obey limp back to base with just Twig and Prime. Oh, is Splice going to go? Are they no going to try to end? They're going to try. Divio's is teleporting back. He should be here any second. Here comes the Gab, and he's not got an ultimate available, but Moswell has the crit. Into the Titan room they go then. Splice try to end the game. Two to O over Obey. Yes, Obey made it to Worlds, but it's Splice that have got to advance. Splice with a 2-0 victory. Twig could be there, but not quite enough. Splice, keep it alive. They eliminate Obey Alliance. Splice were really, really good, unfortunately. They played better than us, they deserved to win. We didn't show everything that we were capable of, which is upsetting um, afterwards. I think we're all super sad. It's especially bad because to go out of the first hurdle uh, at 2 0, not even winning a game, it was really painful, um, especially with it being some of our last years. So, yeah, um, we could have definitely performed better, we could have drafted better, we could have played better as a team. If the blame doesn't go down to anyone individually, I think all of us feel like the blame is on us. So, yeah. Felt pretty bad after it, but now that they've won, it does feel better. It does feel a lot better. So they lose to the world champions at least. That's what we were saying, like how much easier it would be if we were on the other side of the bracket and we got to see them play, because we didn't get to watch them play for two months. Yeah. And we would have learned so much. But that's just the way it goes, right? We weren't good enough on the day. It's not a good excuse. So. We always lose to the world champion, though. It has happened, yeah. yeah. That's just how good we are. We always do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> when, I, when I think of the Obey Smite team, I think of a team of underdogs that are relatable, lovable, and are just really damn tough. They don't, they don't have Baskin. You know, they don't have Adapting. They're, they're not the team that everyone is always going to be like, oh my god, they're, they're going to be insane. But this is a team that, that really emphasizes teamwork, and I think that their legacy is one of just perseverance and not giving up. This is just a team that, that has been around for so long, has been so ingrained in the community. I think of uh, Ataraxia as the poster child for me of what uh, a Smite Pro should be one that really cares about the scene deeply and, and not just winning, though that is incredibly important to him as a competitor. But I think that Obey really does embody what I wish all Smite teams could be. You know, tough, innovative, fun to watch, and ultimately just really damn good at Smite. Uh, I think the most memorable was the, well, the most memorable was probably, well, like season three, when we, we got picked up pretty much right before Worlds, right? A little bit before Worlds. And then we went in and we did really good in that tournament. Uh, we weren't that big, uh, like we weren't as established back then, even though a lot of us played a lot. We hadn't really like done anything good together yet until we got to that Worlds. And uh, you know, it was the first time we played Worlds under a bay. And it felt like we could, we, could have, we could have won that tournament, to be honest. But it was a really good tournament all in all. Uh, nailed the last one too. Uh, you get a little bit emotional, Brian. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I'm probably gonna quit next season. Does that? I don't know. Makes me emotional, Tiger Man. But it wasn't until the announcement came out that I realized how much of a uh, important part of Smite they'd been, because it's been three years that they and us have been, you know, staple heads together, and the the outcry that people said, you know, people were really sad that they were leaving, and there was a lot of uh, a lot of responses saying that this isn't, you know, it's not what they want and stuff. But at the end of the day, you got to respect Obey's decision, and uh, it really did just put it in perspective how much of a hole they're going to leave and smite by leaving. I feel like the the race is not about the finish line, and it's usually about the running. You know, it's it's about the journey, and that's what life is, I guess. And uh, I feel like just to not to not win at the end doesn't really matter. We've all enjoyed competing at the highest level for the last two, three years together and I think that's what matters the most.